So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at doing averages. And if we take the numbers 3, 5, and 7, and we say, what's the average? You can probably tell from looking that the average there is going to be 5. But if you couldn't, you could add them all together. 3 plus 7 is 10, plus another 5 is 15. And divide by 3, the number of things, to come up with that 5 average. So what I want to do first is show you a different way to do averages uh, using some candy. And it's quarantine time, so there are limited options. But what we have here is we have some Skittles. Actually, I actually have M&Ms on top of the Skittles wrappers, and then I have some Hershey's Kisses. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do a little experiment here. Now, the Skittles have a mass of 8.46 grams. I'm going to fill that into my chart here. And then we're going to go ahead and zero that out. I'll carefully add these M&Ms. Get the mass of those. And that was 10 point, I'll round this up just for matching my earlier data, 10.24. Pair that. We're going to add our four Hershey's Kisses. And 19.65. So if I said I want to know what the average mass of one piece of candy is, I have 19.65 grams for four Hershey's, 10.24 grams for 12 M&M's, and 8.46 grams for eight Skittles. One thing that I could do is I could total up all of those masses, which comes out to be 38.35 grams. And I could say that, well, that's 24 total pieces of candy, and therefore I could divide 38 by 38.35 divided by 24, which comes out to be 1.60 grams on average. Now, that's how you've traditionally done things, but what I want to do now is show you a different way to do this that's a little bit different, but is the exact same process actually. Work this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the averages for all of these. So the Hershey's 19.65 for 4 on average would be 4.91 grams for each one Hershey. The M&Ms here are 0.853 grams per one M&M, and the Skittles are just over one, 1.06 grams. So another way that I can do this average is instead of kind of dividing by the total number is I can do percentages. So I'm gonna write out what percent of my candy pieces by number were each of these kinds. So 4 out of 24 is 1 out of 6. So I have 16.7% of my candy pieces were Hershey's. I have 12 out of 24, 50% were M&M's. And the remainder, which is one third, 33.3% were Skittles. So that totals up to be 100%. So I want to put that as a relative abundance, which is the same thing as the percentage but I'm just going to change it from a percent mode out of 100 to out of 1. So in other words, I'm going to make this into a decimal. So then instead of being out of 100, we're out of 1, and our total would be 1. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that's new, and this is called a relative mass. And a relative mass is a combination of the relative abundance and the mass of one piece. So for that, we're going to use our average here for something like an isotope, but that all isotopes would be identical. Uh, for the candy, it's not exactly that, but it's close enough. So we're going to take 0.167, we're going to multiply it by that 4.91, and it comes out to 0 0.820. And this one comes out to 0.427 for 0.5 times this average for M&Ms. And then 0.333 times 1.06 comes out to 0.353. Now what these are or if you had one piece of candy, this is kind of combining how frequently that one piece would have been a Hershey along with what the mass of that is. So this is kind of like, on average, this is your contribution of the Hershey Kisses to that one piece. So when we total those up, it turns out that they add up to be exactly 1.60 grams. And so you note that this and this are identical. So what we're doing is we're finding the average, but instead of using and counting individual pieces and then adding up the total masses and dividing by the number of pieces, 
Now we're using percentages in the mass of a single particle. And the reason why that's critical in chemistry is because in chemistry, you can't count up every single atom. There's just too many of them. But you can figure out what percent they occur with what frequency they occur in nature. And so we can use this percentage method to find the average mass of a particular element by doing this process that we did down here in black and green instead of what you would traditionally do in orange and purple. So let's take a look at an example. So chlorine has two common isotopes, chlorine 37 and chlorine 35. So in chlorine 37, we have 17 protons and then 20 neutrons. And in chlorine uh, 35, we have 17 protons and 18 neutrons. Okay. So chlorine 37 occurs 24.47% of the time. Each chlorine 37 has a mass very close to 37, 36.9590 atomic mass units. Where an atomic mass unit is approximately the mass of one proton or one neutron. Over here, we have 75.53% of the time we get chlorine 35 isotopes. And those have a mass very close to 35, 34.96885. So if I want to know what the average mass of a chlorine atom is, so of all the chlorine that exists in the universe, what's the average of them? I know it's going to be somewhere between these two numbers. Okay. But it's not just going to be me adding those two numbers up and dividing by two. I need to account for the fact that this one occurs almost three times, or a little more than three times, sorry, as frequently as these do. So the way I would calculate that is I would take this percentage and change it into that relative abundance. So I would take 0 0.2447, and I would multiply that by that individual mass, 36.9590 AMU. And then I would add that to the same thing over here. I'm going to change that 75% to 0.7553. Multiply that by this 34.96885 AMU. So I would get a relative mass for each of these, this one being a little bit you know, larger because this occurs more frequently. So when I sum those together, I end up with 35.45. Five, five. I'm going to round that last one to a six. You can probably do that rounded one more place, 35.46. So this is the average mass of a chlorine atom that takes into consideration how frequently these each occur. Now you can notice about this that it's closer to 35 than it is to 37 because the 35 massed uh, isotope is more frequently occurring. And then if you kind of do a little wiggle room on the math there, because we've got a, some decimals here, uh, but we're about 35.5. So we're about, you know, between 35 and 37. It's not 50-50, that would have put us about 36. Instead, it was 75-25, which puts us very close to 35.5. Um, and so this is how you do the calculations to determine these. Now, some elements only have one common isotope, but for many of the ones that we do calculations on, they have more than two. So in that case, you would just do this conversion process, changing this to a relative abundance, multiplying it by the mass of that isotope, and then just adding those together. And then oftentimes in a chemistry class, we will often not need to use all the decimal forms of this. We could have just said 37 and 35 here and still gotten approximately the same answer um, because that's so close to that and so close to that. The only reason we use these full values is to show that you can actually do this to a high level of precision with the instruments we use to find these values. And so sometimes we do actually want, you know, five, six, seven sig figs on these. And in that case, then we'll, we'll use those values.